Hello and welcome to the Bears, Birds, and Brews podcast. This is a show about the Chicago Bears, the Atlanta Falcons, and craft beer. My name is Asa Lakani. My co-host is Nabil Lalani. And on today's episode, we have a very, very special guest, Mr. Greg Schaefer, coming Howdy. to us from sunny California. Is it Los Angeles? Yes, it is uh, Los Angeles. The, the great city of angels, um, you know, where, yeah. Hollywood, Tinseltown, we got a lot to talk to Greg about. Oh, yeah. And we're COVID peaking like you guys. So, uh, you know, we got that in common, too. Right. Otherwise, we would have flown out to L.A. to do this, you know. Well, of course, of course. We were all... Yeah, to see the new stadium. Right. My God. Um, but so we're going to talk to Greg about a lot of stuff. If you don't know Greg, you're going to get to know. Well, you do know Greg. You just don't know who he is. But you'll, you know, we'll get there. <laughs> um, but as we start off with every episode, we got some beer for you all. So we're going to tell you what we're drinking. Greg's got some beer. That's we'll right. start with the beer stuff and then we'll go from there. All right, so the beer that I just cracked is uh, from The Vale in um, Richmond, Virginia, and it's uh, Dusty Dusty Roads Roads. It's a double IPA. Um, yeah, assuming paying homage, homage to uh, Dusty Roads, you know, the awesome wrestler, father of Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes, I believe. Yes, sir. So Dusty right now, Dusty. Cody, just Cody. Then. Just Cody, right? yeah. Dusty Dusty Roads Roads. And uh, what are you drinking, Greg? Uh, well, I, I was um... – Oh, cheers. I, you know, I've got a couple different things to choose from. It's really hot here in LA right now. So this is kind of my go-to Goza. It's a, a, a traditional original uh, Goza from Germany uh, in Leipzig called Rittergoods. But since this is really craft beer here, I, I figure I should go to uh, a local brewery uh, called McLeod's Ale, which is uh, originally was a British, a uh, little British microbrewery uh, in beautiful Van Nuys, which we can get to in a minute. Uh, but now they've kind of opened up and make a lot of different things. And this is one of my favorites. It's uh, called Calvert Crush. It's uh, their version of a New England hazy uh, IPA. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's quite good. I'm going to pour it. Yeah, Nabil loves that phrase, quite good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, that's awesome stuff, man. And look at that. The pour, look at that pour. The glass. He's yeah. got a real glass. Oh. He's a real adult. Yeah, it, it's, oh. like, it's like he was had a vision for like a brewery show or something oh, that, you know, yeah. that amazing pour right over there. Oh, look at that. Well, uh, you know, when you've been researching something your whole life, uh, <laughs> drinking, that is. Right. Yeah, right. it was uh, – <laughs> It was about time there was a show about it. Cheers. Let's go. Cheers. Mm. This IPA is fantastic. I like mm. that it's a very it's very dry. Yeah. I think I think that's uh, dusty. You know, like the dustiness, or like I, I'm pretty sure that's also to that the sediment in the dusty dusty roads roads because there's going to be a lot of sediment at the bottom with these hazy IPAs. But you know, this it's really nice. It's really good. Um, how's yours going? Oh, it's great. Yeah, definitely cloudy. And I don't know, there's something about when it's just, you know, 15 degrees hotter than the day before, uh, especially uh, day drinking at the moment. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, it, it just hits the spot. Um, but that's why I have backup because it goes down really easily. Oh, well, and we're going to be talking for a minute. But so, all right, let's do the big reveal. Right. So Greg is a legend, actually, if you guys don't know. Um, Right now, we're going to talk to him about his show on Netflix. Greg is the creator of a Netflix show, a real Netflix yeah. show called Bruise cheers. Brothers. Yeah, cheers to that. Uh, it's called Bruise Brothers. Greg, you want to tell people a little bit about the show, and then we can talk more about it? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, so Bruce Brothers, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I did create it, and uh, I developed it uh, with my brother. And, uh, I would say it's loosely semi-autobiographical, except – no one uh, wants to see a show about two writers. Uh, so uh, I picked uh, the one thing uh, I've been researching my whole life and I'm passionate about, uh, that's drinking beer. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so th the show actually takes place at a, at a um, it's supposed to be a rundown, horribly run brewery in Van Nuys, which again, uh, uh, and it's really a show about two brothers who know everything there is about beer and absolutely nothing about anything else. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Like me and the bill, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know one is a uh one's kind of an everyman and and will drink any type of beer and uh just uh right. uh forgets to uh charge customers and and poorly has a poorly run business and the other one uh could give a shit about the customers and only cares about making the perfect beer yeah, we're like a cross between those two but so <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how to make beer we just know to drink it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um so Okay, so let's start with this. Greg, I actually finished the show this morning or this nice. afternoon. 
Um, so I watched a few episodes and then I got caught up with a bunch of stuff because obviously things are crazy right now. But yeah, I finished season one this morning. It's on Netflix, Bruce Brothers. Make sure y'all go check it out. I thought it was hilarious, man. Like, it's definitely a little raw from the perspective yep. of, you know, I wasn't sure what I was getting into at first. And then, like, the first episode started, and I was like, oh, man, this is yeah. insane. Um, which, by the way, I, I wanted to make sure I say this. I'm sorry we don't have any glass dildo bottles <laughs> to drink from right now. Well, it's fine. Mind. I didn't know how PG the podcast was, so mine's uh, around the corner, but I can uh, I actually do have one of those here. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and again, right, write, write what you know, right? And for the record, you can say fuck or anything. Yeah. You know. Good, good, good. Yeah. Yes. But this one, we're letting it fly because your show is pretty provocative and it doesn't hold anything back, which I love about it. And it's really off the wall and creative, but it's very compelling. And like, so I... I was a huge fan of the league. Um, really, I was really sad when it was when it went away. But you know, I, I kind of saw the vision of how it ended, so I completely get that. But I love that this show has the same raunchiness as the league. Like, it's a show that's like not to say it's just for dudes, but you know, it's about you know a bunch of dudes hanging out, and you get that raunchiness stuff of like the stuff that you know a bunch of dudes say that is never said around anywhere else. Yeah, you know, that was kind of the plan. And I mean, they both are scripted and that, yes, I technically I wrote the shows and had some other writers help me out. But uh, one thing my brother did who created the league was, um, and we tried to do with Bruce Brothers too, is uh, just find some really funny improv actors that, that are like value-added actors that bring something else to it too. Um, and then the fun thing here, where instead of it being in the fantasy football world, which is a phenomenal world itself. We'll talk about this. Just, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, getting to uh, mock slash embrace uh, beer culture and uh, you know there's you know you used to go to a, a bar and, and go and get drunk and now you got to listen to your best friend uh, you know pontificate about the you know the apricot notes and the, the hazy IPA they're drinking right. by the way there are apricot notes in this it's very good <laughs> I, I, I hate it and I've also turned into that schmuck so. right <laughs> right like it, it, it's always like the most annoying thing until you realize you're doing that thing just as much as everybody else and exactly. It becomes annoying when other people don't do it. And yeah. then you're like, oh, yes. you just see why are you not as passionate about right. ordering this beer as I am? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. So yeah, it's that yeah, half half uh, embracing, half mocking uh that we really wanted to get to. Uh, just like my brother did with the uh, with the league. So nice. just to talk about the league for a minute. So that yeah. is your personal fantasy league, right? Yours and your brother's personal like, yes. based off of that, right? So the league itself, I mean God, I'm dating myself. Uh, fuck it, I'm old. I got a kid in high school. Uh, I that league started about 17 years ago, oh, and wow. uh, and so we the league had been going for many years. And then my but they came out. My brother did the, the show, and I don't know how well you know the league, but there was a thing you know called the the, the Shiva and the Sacco. That is all real. All those trophies, oh, no. all of it is so real that we had the draft one year at uh, the the Beverly Hills Hilton. And uh, out by the pool, because whoever wins gets to do it. Normally, we go to a Browns game. The league, a lot of the guys are from Ohio. We'd meet there for the first week and do the draft there. But one year, we happened to do it there. And the league was pretty new. It was like three years old, four years old. And uh, some people came up to us and said, oh, wow, you guys just copied the, uh, the Shiva from the league. And we're like, no, no, this <laughs> is the Shiva. And this is the Sacco. And then we had to, like, go on and on making fun of the person who had the Sacco that year. Uh, I think it was me, but we actually really do have a, a bull scrotum on the Sacco. Uh, gets shipped around the country every year for a, you know an obscene amount of money. Same thing with uh, the Shiva itself. Uh, the, the names are written on it, and uh, yeah, no, no, no. The, the other thing about the league, if you if you're a super fan, people may notice that there were a lot of Seattle Seahawks on it, and uh, that's just because uh, my brother is a diehard Seahawks fan. So his dream came true there, and uh, anytime he got to. Uh, put some players on he ended up putting uh, there were more than enough there were some bears on there too yeah there were oh, yeah. So i was gonna ask you about that because you know you had um you know the best bears quarterback of all time jay cutler and you had <laughs> the second bears quarterback of all time jim mcmahon both on the That's right and it took place in chicago yes so, so there was definitely an opening there anyway it it, yeah. it just felt sometimes i'm like jeff are you sure this show doesn't take place in seattle because uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh so just yeah. to give you some context greg Nabil and a lot of our other friends are actually diehard fans of the league. I don't watch much TV despite uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. pursue a career in entertainment myself. So your show is actually like the third show I've ever watched like 
at least for now from start to finish like yeah i mean i've watched like three i've watched entourage and the wire and now sure. bruce brothers <laughs> oh, there we go That's like the only three shows i've ever watched wow. like episode He's... one to the most recent episode uh -huh. um so i haven't watched the league but they would talk about it all the time so much so that we actually have a real fantasy football trophy for our league because nice. of yeah your league so, or your show so we did kind of copy you all we're i think close to 10 years in now yeah. nice nice yeah, been doing it we got a long-standing league and the trophy is at my house right now by he, the way. he is the current champion um I am, uh, there we go i was i'm actually the current loser but i won it the year before so i don't know i don't know uh, okay uh, yeah, yeah yeah you know there's a pendulum there somehow uh, as much as we <laughs> think there's was skills involved show. but um <laughs> back to bruce brothers yeah going so back to bruce yeah, yeah, yeah. so like you know, like we were saying earlier, it's loosely based on you and your brother, correct? Yeah, I would say just the the uh, the personalities. Uh, my brother, yeah, we are close. I mean, we're in the same business. We live ten miles apart. Uh, but he would say it himself. He's like, it's an homage to him, an homage of him being an asshole. <laughs> so the character Adam, if you if you've seen it, is more based on him, and I'm the uh, uh, Wilhelm, or, or which is you know named after the. Uh, the Bavarian Duke uh, who came up with the beer purity law as opposed to the uh, more recent German purity law of 1934. Yeah. Um, so. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so you would say that your brother would be the perfectionist and you would be the one that doesn't want to talk to me then. Yeah. <laughs> they would sit down and talk to anybody and love to have a beer. My brother would be the guy who I'll put it this way. We, we did some other uh, interviews and podcasts and, and when they would ask like what our favorite beers are and I could go on and on, I've got so many favorite beers and I, I just love to, to try out new things. Jeff started talking about his favorite beer, which came from a uh, specific region of, uh, in the hills of Italy mm. uh, called Amarone. <laughs> his favorite beer is a wine. Yes, he said, oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes, he got that. <laughs> so Jeff would literally say, he would talk about how much he loves wine on a beer podcast. And, <laughs> but I'm telling you, if I did a show, if I created a show about wine, he would be talking about his favorite beer. That's just uh, the kind of guy he is. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's so, great. That's real great. quick, I, I got to ask because, you know, I do stand up, which we talked about. Maybe we'll get to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how, how did he feel when he saw how he was portrayed in the show, even though it wasn't an exact thing, but just like, hey, this is the guy that's, you're the inspiration for this jerk right here. Like, how did he feel about that? And how do you feel as a creator, a content creator, but not just a writer or an influencer? Like, you are. I mean, you, you know, the whole, well, no, 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 totally. You know, it's, it's, um, <laughs> if anything, he wanted, uh, the character, the guy who played Adam, Mike Castle, lovely gentleman, uh, to be more of an asshole. Like he, he was cool with it. <laughs> he wanted the personalities, uh, heightened even more. Uh, so that was fine. I will say that some of the personal stories, you could almost say that, uh, Bruce Brothers for me was uh, in a way my own therapy because, uh, there are a couple of stories that happened and we did some flashbacks when they were kids that actually really did happen uh, without, you know, it's fine to give shit away. It doesn't matter. It's been on for a while. Um, in the second episode, they're basically trying to recreate uh, a beer that they have to give to a distributor. Right. And the older asshole brother, Adam, uh, pissed in the beer. <laughs> so they have to recreate it somehow. And, uh, and then we learned that back when they were kids, uh, this isn't the first time Adam has done something with his piss to his brother. He actually peed in his brother's bed while uh, the younger brother was sleeping uh, and the younger brother thought as a 10 year old he was a bedwetter 10 year old bedwetter this happened to me in real life that is my brother oh. he actually did this and I fell asleep I was a heavy sleeper and little did I know a stream of piss was coming from my brother about 12 12 years old at the time peeing in a spot near uh my penis and uh and I would wake up in the morning and I literally, I thought I needed help, like therapy. I was, I, what's happening to me? I'm regressing. Wow. I thought I was a 10 year old bedwetter. So I've actually tried to get that uh, storyline in <laughs> on about, I've been on about 19 shows and I, I, it's for some reason they've, uh, it's never passed, but fuck it. I put it in a flashback. You, you know what? I think it's great for Bruce Brothers. I think that's perfect. Yeah, I think. Yeah. You, so, <laughs> man, there's so many things I want to ask and talk about the show. And there's so much more, too. It's, it's good because we got a few beers here. You got a few beers. Right. But real quick, before we move much further along in the Bruce Brothers stuff, which we will, the beer that you're drinking now comes from a brewery that inspired the brewery in the show. Is that right? 
That's absolutely right. So, you know, as a writer, you, you, I mean, the joke is always write what you know and like try to make something personal. And I never got any of that until I got a little bit older because uh, I always thought, oh, I can write anything in my 20s. It's so easy. And, and then I finally realized, no, you know, I, I'm sitting down at a, a brewery that had just opened, McLeod's in Van Nuys. And uh, this brewery, let me tell you, LA is a big, it's basically like 60 different suburb, suburbias together. And where I live in, in Sherman Oaks is near Van Nuys, which used to be the porn capital of the world. And uh, it's also, and there, there's, some, there's some nice, you know, allegedly, yes. And there, there's some nice uh, parts of Van Nuys too. But this particular area where this brewery started up uh, is in the shantiest, just shittiest part of, of uh, Van Nuys in an industrial area on a no-name street next to strip clubs and uh, auto body shops. And I'm sitting around just having a great beer and I'm looking around trying to come up with ideas for a show and I'm drinking and I'm buzzed and I'm like, holy fucking shit. Now this would be a great place for a show. Who the hell would open a brewery in the middle? And basically I found out from the owner, this lovely uh, Scottish man, it, it started out as a, a British microbrewery. Um, he, this is all, he, he opened up a brewery in LA and this is all he could afford. And he thought, hey, I'm in LA, this is gonna be awesome. Little did he realize. Right. Uh, I'm proud to say that, that the, the that was about it opened about five years ago and uh, they're kicking ass even with COVID man they have a right. a to go business now and an outside area and because their rent is low because they're in the middle of nowhere uh, but people come and uh, yeah the beer's great and so it definitely was an inspiration for the show the location itself and that's what you're drinking right now right, right. so yeah I'm drinking yeah the the uh, brewery is called McLeod's and okay. uh, oh they're fantastic but. Um, uh, the show, we ended up shooting at a real brewery, too, just to, a little bit of a tangent here. But one of the wonderful things about the show, too, as much as, yes, we try to do raunchy stuff and comedy first, no question. I did want to make everything about the brewery itself feel authentic. And uh, we were lucky enough to find a brewery. This was also uh, uh, one of the fun things about uh, location scouting for the show. Uh, I think I went to over 30 breweries around L.A. to look. A horrible and, uh, job. Oh, so hard. Just like all the research I've done in my life uh, looking. But <laughs> uh, about five or six in, even though I went to 30, uh, <laughs> I realized, wait a minute, uh, we can't actually shoot at a functioning brewery. It's too loud. Like, I knew that. Like, and as much as they said, oh, we'll turn off with the cameras and stuff, you can't turn off that and the air and everything else for eight or 10 hours and expect to make good beer. So it, it just, the, the world's collided. And we found this place uh, in downtown LA uh, that, um, is looking like Van Nuys. Uh, we found this place called Iron Triangle, which is actually a great brewery that happened to be closing its doors because the owners of Iron Triangle uh, <laughs> happened to be uh, in the pot business as well. And the pot business they decided was a lot more profitable. Ooh. So they, yes, who knew? Yes. Yeah, so they decided to sell the brewery, but before they sold it, they're like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, we'll, we'll rent it out to you guys. So we shot there for a, a month um, late last summer, about a year ago. And, uh, and we're able to uh, use everything. And we had um, uh, some of the people who work there as, as our kind of like beer uh, connoisseurs, uh, I should say, Cicerones. And uh, we actually had the actors and myself, we went to beer school, another fun thing. Like they got to learn how to pour the beer correctly, how to clean the taps, like literally going through the beer process because when we were shooting, um, we wanted them to be as comfortable as possible and look like they knew what they were doing. Nice. So it was really great. Well, and I think that came through in the bill. Go for yeah. it. So, so since you had your own brewery for, you know, what was it? Six months of shooting. How many of your own beers did you brew? Uh, of my own beer? You know, I, I will say uh, I'm kind of like you guys there. As much as uh, I'm a guy who loves beer and has researched it his whole life, I am not a home brewer. <laughs> I am not. So I, I did have a lot of Iron Triangle beer. Okay. But the hardest part about um, the shooting process itself is when we were there for a lot of pre-production, uh, you know, and, and writing and, and, and blocking. But once we started production, there are these silly things the unions have with rules and alcohol that everything had to be uh, non-alcoholic, which is actually something else that's fun to talk about just because yeah. uh, it's hard enough to get a keg of O'Doul's or a keg of any non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> you can always get, you know, you know, there, there are some decent ones like Guinness makes Buckler and stuff, but imagine we were trying to make real different colored beers and ambers and stouts and, and sours. And uh, 
it, it took a while. We found this place in Newport Beach that actually makes all these different types of beers in cans. We had to buy them in cans, put them into a funnel system so we could actually still use them oh, on the tap. Wow. wow. Yeah, and it took a lot because we had tons of extras drinking beer. And mind you, they looked fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, they tasted like ass. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I, uh, yeah, according to your uh, stand-up comedy, you like ass. So that's <laughs> Yeah, man, this is so good. Oh, my God. Um, that's a real laugh. That, I did not pay him to laugh like that. He's just laughing like that. But so oh, shit. Uh, quick tangent, back to tangent, whatever. Yeah. Two things I wanted to point out. One, Iron Triangle is featured in the show as I yes. guess, a homage to them and like branding. Yes, like that was the Karate Kid episode where uh, it really was an homage to Karate Kid. Okay. Uh, if you look at that episode of uh, uh, the beer competition of the best nose in L.A., and uh, we had the villain actually played by uh, uh, a gentleman, Asif, uh, the uh, actor who's yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, yes, we made him, we gave the, the uh, actual beer Cicerone from Iron Triangle. His name was Kale. So we gave him that name and everything. And besides that, the other breweries, for the most part, were, they were all real. They wanted to be a part of it. It was great. Yeah, That's no, awesome. it's totally great, great exposure. And the one thing I wanted to tell you about my stand up comedy offer that I said I was going to wait is so the video that you're referring to, in which I, proclaim my love for eating ass mm -hmm. <laughs> um asif ali the the iron triangle guy that you featured in your show was actually on that show where that oh, video was he from. really yeah but he did a guest appearance so i that show i produced it's called lmao laughing my asian uh -huh. and i co-produced it with a friend of mine here um and then we had neil nanda i don't know if you know him but neil uh -huh. yeah like in l.a Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Asif Ali was actually in Atlanta shooting a movie or something uh, when we were so doing great. the show last November. So he came and did a surprise drop-in and opened the LMAO show for us, which I was featured on, and I co-produced and co-ran. And then the bill was in the audience. He got to enjoy the beer and the comedy it was without great. stressing out. That's how to do it. Stuff that <laughs> I was doing. But I saw Asif, and I'm like, yeah, I know that guy. And then the Iron Triangle, it's like, oh, right, this is like, more than full circle, you know. Look at that. That's awesome. It's almost yes. like that whole thing was a perfect storm, which is a segue <laughs> to this treehouse beer, the perfect Ooh. storm. Oh yeah. Look uh, at that. Yeah. It's an American double IPA. Uh, sorry for cutting you off, Greg. Go ahead. What were you saying? No, 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 no. No, I, I, I was just uh, I didn't know we were done talking about eating ass, but I, I just figured that you uh I don't know if you've seen the show Dave, uh that my brother co created with uh, the rapper uh with with little Dicky. And like uh the, yes. So. There, yeah, it's a really fun show on FX, and uh, but a uh, second or third episode just happens to be all about eating ass, which really hasn't been done in a TV show before. So, uh, yeah, you should check it out. Yeah, <laughs> I actually had that on my uh, my COVID TV watch list. I have the entire. Oh, good, good, good. No, it's, uh, yeah, give it a couple. It's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's fun. They are they're uh, working on a second season right now. Greg, you Cheers. Want to this, yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I wish, I wish. So I just want to say, since you brought up Dave. I've, I've heard great things about it. It's actually on my list as well. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but like, I really like Louie. That was one of my favorite shows before, you know, oh, what happened with him. No, no, look, no question. I mean, it is, it is a sad thing because uh, I've, I've known him a little bit. Uh, saw him at a friend of mine's. He was the best man at a friend of mine's wedding way back when, 20 years ago. Oh. Probably as writer, comedic writers and stand-ups go, you know, top three, top four comedians. That being said, um, he, he's a fuck up. I mean, <laughs> I hate to say it. So yeah. it's horrible. It's horrible. I'm not, I'm not defending anything about him. He was incredibly, incredibly funny, but it's, uh, it's really sad and rough. And, and um, unfortunately, a lot of those things I just have heard from secondhand and third hand are, are true, which really sucks. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, his show is on FX, but Nabil's going to tell us about this beer real fast. Yeah, of course. So, uh, um now uh greg you know since uh, you you go all over to breweries have you uh been to treehouse i have not so in terms of like ipas they're either one or two in the country yeah yeah um so boston you know it's it's a little it's outside of boston but i highly recommend you check it out uh trillium of uh, course it's in boston but treehouse yeah. is worth the drive uh that i i really i know i'm i'm uh i'm not gonna say i'm biased to the west coast it's more just uh ease to get to but uh Definitely. Yeah, I uh, I went to college out east. I, I did my I, I I did a little bit of beer drinking recently there, but I on a reunion. But I have not. Uh, I need to get there. Where like the your your Northern California and Oregon, I'm uh, 
and San Diego too. I'm 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 pretty, oh, no. pretty up. I can I can talk. Oh, there okay. you go. Thank you. Pause for a second. Um, so, uh, well, and and then real quick, I just wanted to. We're gonna go back and forth, I guess, because we're just all sure. over the place. But um, back to Dave for a second. I just wanted yeah. to, I saw a little Dicky, little Dicky. Sorry, not that little Dicky. Yeah, perform, yeah. <laughs> perform in Las Vegas once at a music festival. And it was legitimately one of the best live performances I saw that weekend at the music festival, but maybe one of the best live performances I've ever seen. Um, and that was when he was just in rapper mode. So like, yeah, excited about the TV show, but have you had Monkish? Yes. Okay. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. Been drinking a lot uh, of that. Yeah. So I've been getting, so as you were saying earlier, how like, you know, you, you and your brother have this beer relationship where your brother's this way and that my, my, I have this yeah. relationship with my brother. And my brother, you know, is a peer snob, very high IPAs or whatever. He just recently got into the trading game. And I've been getting a lot of Treehouse and Monkish. And I've just been like the lucky guy who's get to drink Monkish and Treehouse all day. So. That Now that is a, uh, <laughs> that's a relationship with benefits. That's great. There we that go. Is, Definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm just here and there and he asked for $50. I'm like, gladly, here you go. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Um. So I, I, I want to finish up the Bruce Brothers stuff if there's Definitely. anything else yeah. left there and then we can talk about sports stuff. But regarding Bruce Brothers, so I thought it was a really good show. I thought um, the storyline was pretty cohesive. I guess like what goes into creating a show like that? Because I know you write the pilot and I know you talked to Sean Ventura who connected yeah. us. So shout out to Sean. Um, I wanted to make sure we mentioned him, but you've been sitting on this show for like five years. So... At least that's what you said on his podcast. So, like, when did you know that, hey, now is the right time to do it? And then also, you know, how – what goes into creating a TV show like that where it's like, I got the pilot, I have the characters, and I kind of have maybe a start and a finish, but the middle, like, how, how do you go about that process when it's your show specifically? Sure. No, that's a good question. I mean, you know, the, the there's – the there's your own timeline and then there's the business's timeline. So although this was really four or five years ago that I uh, initially kind of came up with the idea, I'd actually sold this uh, originally to a fledgling network uh, on cable called IFC. They have like Brockmeyer right. and uh, some other things. Yeah. And you know, they, uh, um, and unfortunately just didn't go there uh, a few years back. And I, I just felt like, especially with, you know, the craft brewery boom and, everything else. I still knew there was a show there. So I, I aged down the characters a little bit, talked to my brother about opening it up with some, you know, some improv actors and uh, kind of retooled it a little bit and then uh, pitched it around and Netflix uh, was really, really interested. And, but yeah, the, the way it goes is there was a pilot at IFC and then it didn't go anywhere. And then I kind of created the world and, and at Netflix, you kind of pitch a series. Mm -hmm. So I pitched kind of a beginning, middle and end. And in some ways, outside of the raunchy comedy and stuff, I really kind of looked at like Silicon Valley as like a template of like, you're kind of following a business uh, that yeah. would actually do really well if they could get out of each other's way, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. So you're kind of following them. So the plan really is that, and you're kind of like looking at it as a um, eight episodes or what it would be in the second season, what it would be in the third season and looking back and, 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 and at the end of the day, it just comes down to the characters and like, why do you like them? It may take a while to like them, but you know, what do you, what do you like in um, the beginning of the season, middle and end? And uh, that, that's kind of how I pitched, how I pitched the show yeah. as the brewery and beer itself as the backdrop. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, we could talk a whole hour about just the show itself, which we can, if you want, um, cause I got a lot of questions like, what was your favorite part about making it? What'd you learn? And who's your favorite character? And you know, all that. Yeah. Um, but I know we got some other stuff on the agenda, so maybe we'll come back to yeah. Bruce Brothers. Sure, right. sure. So, you know, we do have some sports. And, you know, you're bringing up, you know, your background a little bit, saying, you know, you're from Ohio. And, yeah. and then it's going to – I'm still confused right now. So you're from Ohio. Yeah. yeah. You're a Cowboys fan. And yeah. you went to U of M, right? Uh, I didn't go to U of M, but uh, I was born on campus. Both my parents went there. Okay. Uh, my dad spent 13 years there. Yeah, so – yeah, I'm a I'm a diehard. I mean, I I pee maize and blue. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's start off with that. You know, with the okay. with years of the Big Ten canceling the season. You know, you a diehard U of M fan. You know, Jim Harbaugh still having his players like at practice. What are your thoughts? 
you know, I mean, and maybe it's, maybe I'm on, it's because I'm on one of the coasts or maybe it's because I'm in a hot zone uh, or maybe I like science. Um, I just think that we're fucked if, if we really have a season, especially for players that aren't getting paid or anything else. I think it's selfish. Um, I think it's going to end badly. Uh, that And this is coming from someone who I'm not going to know what to do with myself on Saturday afternoon, although there'll probably be football games, NFL games on yeah, Saturday. Definitely. But uh, so I think it was the right decision. I think that I'm actually kind of proud of the Big Ten to uh, just say, you know what? Let's just try to get ahead of this right now because instead of being, uh, you know, like uh, what I think is going to happen with the Big 12 and uh, the SEC, and uh, especially if they have fans and other things. I mean, so as painful as it is, I mean, I more than anything, my first memory of television is Ohio State Michigan football game. So, like, I, it's in my blood, my parents, my family, and it's going to kill me. But I, I just think it's the right thing to do now until, uh, you know, until we actually – have uh, you know someone in charge who can actually get testing done? Yeah, oh, that's uh, fair. Um, so what I was gonna say next was like, yeah, you know, you're right about you know the SEC because I don't see them canceling, but I also see the SEC has enough power, like within the individual coaches, where yeah, like you know the the governor or you know like I'm not trying to get political, but some, yeah, yeah, yeah. someone someone in Atlanta could say, I mean, if someone in Georgia could say, everyone wear a mask, people still won't do it. But if Kirby yeah. Smart or if Nick Saban were to be like, hey, wear a mask, the yeah. entire state would be like, yes. So, and fun fact, Nick Saban has actually already said he's a proponent of wearing masks, and Mal Alabama has a mask mandate in order. Uh, and it came after, not immediately after Nick Saban said it, but to Nabil's point, oh. SEC down here, I mean, I'm sure you've been. Oh, no, no, no. No, it, it, yeah, and there's nothing better. And I, I've been, I've got, I've got friends who went to Bama, and I've got really good friends in the, at, I mean, at Florida, Gator, and I know it's it's everything. Yeah, but I mean, Nick Saban's the most powerful man in Alabama, so. Yeah. <laughs> By far. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and then real quick, because you're a Michigan fan, I just want to ask, uh, what, how do you feel about Tom Brady? You know, it's so funny because it's like, I already have been a Cowboy fan my whole life, which, you know, yes, there's, we're still America's team, even though we have nothing to show for over the last quarter of a century, and everyone <laughs> hates them or loves them. And then, but I would also, I'm not, I'm not a Patriots fan at all, but I'm a Tom Brady homer because of Michigan. Of course. You just have to be like any Michigan player. I always want them to do well. So I'm actually kind of ecstatic that he's out of New England because I just, I always wanted him to be the best quarterback ever because he went to Michigan, even though Drew Henson was in his way. And so, uh, <laughs> so, all right, so let's talk Tom Brady for a minute. All right. Sure. So, sure. So what's like, what do you think is going to happen this year? Tom Brady being, being in Tampa, like, so Asif over here is a Falcons fan. So right now, yeah. Tom Brady's enemy number – is he one or two? I can't tell because oh, Drew Brees is still there. Yeah, Drew Brees is always enemy number one. And then for the record, I went to Mizzou. Uh, oh, you did? So if you, have, if you want to talk about Mizzou stuff later, we can. But uh, – Wait. Yeah. Oh, wait. Are you cracking a beer? I'm cracking my beer. I'm cracking the uh, Leipzig Goza. Every, Every time a beer gets up. cracked, we have to let it yeah. know. So, well. Cheers. All right. Yeah. Goza. So this is the original uh, original Goza. Uh, God, I think it's been around for a couple hundred years. Um, so it is not a craft brew, but it is, man, uh -oh. I'm telling you. Oh, that's great. And, uh, American Gozas are really good, too. Just coriander and salt and a light sour. It just is really, really refreshing. And I, I like it so much better than, like, a, a typical wheat beer that I just is probably my least favorite beer. This just has the saltiness with it. So what's the ABV on that, like a 4.2? Uh, I think it's a little more. I think it's about 4.7, 4. 4.7. Okay, okay. Yeah, it goes down easily. That's why a bigger bottle, but, you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, that sounds great. Um, I just wanted to point out the some of the red font on that bottle that you just had, it looks like the red font from Rodman's Brewery. Um, so That's I don't know. Good eye, yes. Yeah, we, I, we definitely wanted an influence of a little bit of a Germanic thing because of uh, – the lead character of Wilhelm's uh, love of uh, all things uh, German. East Belgium, Deutschland. specifically. Right? <laughs> East Belgium, yes. I actually, side, side story, got some really nasty hate mail from some people in Belgium as we were mocking uh, some things that go on in Belgian politics. And I, I mean, I tried to respond a little bit, and then I realized, what, what am I doing? I'm not... Uh, <laughs> There really is something, Belgium is a made up country anyway, like a lot of European countries or a lot of, you know, European countries that colonize other places. They just put things together. 
but there really is, there are three languages there, but the German population is like, it's like 3%. The rest is Dutch, Flemish, or, or French. Yeah. And the German speaking people of Belgium genuinely, they want to change their name from what they're being told, which is German speaking people of Belgium to East Belgium. They genuinely, they've been petitioning for that for like the last 15 years. So we just changed it to a story that they actually wanted to be East Belgium. <laughs> so uh, like, like East Germany. Uh, and uh, we heightened it a little bit. The game, by the way, if you saw it, crock ball is hundred percent real, all that. Um, yeah. And I actually, I've been to Belgium. So like, and I can say it's, it's uh, like everyone's French over there. Like it's uh, everyone I spoke to speaking French. Um, but you know, it's, it's a fun drinking town. A lot of great beers over there too. Oh, fantastic beer. Yeah. yeah. And then just for the context for people who are listening and haven't watched the show yet, but what laughs is Rodman's is the fictional brewery in the show yes. um, that Greg created. Anyway. Okay. So back to whatever Nabo wants to talk about. So we, we, I think we were talking Tom Brady. Uh, yes. Tom Brady. Well, what do I think is going to happen there in uh, in the uh, Burbs division? Yeah, in the NFC in NFC South. Like, do, do you see Tom Brady win the division? I mean, he's won so many division championships in a row in general. Like, you know, he's just used to doing it. <laughs> it's tough. I I I mean, if I'm hate hate predicting anything, but on paper, the Saints look better than they've ever looked to me. Oh. The Saints actually look like the better. The, I, I know you're not going to like that either. <laughs> the Saints, I, the Saints don't have a weakness at the moment. That, that's, I'm not saying this to rub this all in. I mean, you know, <laughs> but uh, so I, I would probably go one, one Saints, uh, two Brady. But if Brady gets in the playoffs, well, yeah, then of course, best off. I mean, so I think the only weakness I see for Tampa right now is the running back. I mean, there's Ronald Jones Jr. I think they sign sign Shady McCoy, but I don't trust any running back. But outside of that, there is literally no weakness on offense. Yeah, and, and they had a good draft when it comes to the line. I mean, the only question there is, and this can get to fantasy football talk too, it's like, I don't know, like you get, like if anybody's getting COVID on any offensive line, say goodbye to that team. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, any team could be, any really, really good team could be shit like that. And they're like, yeah, kind of what we're seeing in the MLB. And you talk, yes. about, you know, you can't, you got to get out of your own way to be successful. The MLB is somehow managing to like walk that line. But of course they haven't necessarily gotten out of their own way yet. Are they, no, not at all. Are, are they really managing? I mean, well, I only say that because the Braves are doing somewhat decent right now. I mean, so, so just a couple of uh, Braves notes, um, you know, Mark, uh, was it Mike Soroka did tear his AC. I mean, not uh, Achilles, Achilles, very unfortunately, yeah. but you know, like the, the the Cubs didn't play in five games because the the Cardinals had COVID because they went to yeah. you know to hang out. Like so, you know, the NBA is doing a phenomenal job. Um, hockey's doing a phenomenal job. I don't know how good of a job baseball is doing. It's interesting. I, there's been rumors that they're talking about the playoffs making it a bubble, which I think is actually a really good idea. Yeah, really yeah. Um, yeah they're talking about three cities, right? Uh, New York, Chicago, yeah. and LA. I mean, I I don't yeah I don't know how you do. I don't know how you do sports without a bubble right now. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm look, I'm a, as we were talking about college football, I, I love it more than anything. And I'm also, I love the NFL. Uh, I can't think of a better way to waste uh, any weekend day um, or the other That's days. That's why this podcast exists. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So, but I just, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, I'm rooting for it. I'm not, I'm not, but I just, it's going to be tough without a, a bubble. So, Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Asif here is an ass eating genie for a second. Okay, and I am. He, and actually, what he can do, references. he can cancel the NFL season, but give you college football back. Will he do that? Wow, that is tough. A full college football season, uh, just like I mean, I, I, for the record, I wish I wish my Wolverines were. It was next year. I think they're going to be a lot better the following year. But I would still, I would still say yes. I would still okay. take it because my God, I, there's nothing like that excitement. Okay. And again, this yeah. this means that Justin Fields is still in Ohio State. Like we can't change that. <laughs> Dude, he is a beast. Oh. Man. He is. He's a beast. He, is something oh. he really is. I mean, I saw him. No, no, no. I know my my ass is not getting eaten right now, but it is being pounded by Ohio State. So. <laughs> It is, uh, it is, yeah, it's been a really tough uh, several years with yeah. Harbaugh there. I'm not going to lie. Like, the plan for this episode was probably to name it, like, 
Bruce Brothers or Greg Schaefer, something, yeah. you know, just very specific and direct. But I think we might have to change it to the ass eating episode because, of course, right? Yes. What else? It, be? It's the I'm theme. Not, yeah. I'm not applying for jobs or anything right now. It's like, <laughs> who cares? You know? Uh, uh, and, and, uh, all right. All right. So, how did you become a Cowboys fan? I'm still trying to figure all out. All right. Yeah. Ball. No, I, I am mocked by people in the league, league that the show is based on for being a uh, Cowboys and Indians fan. <laughs> Like I played Cowboys and Indians my whole life. Um, but uh, yeah, no, look, I, uh, my father, I, I, I mean, I did grow up in Ann Arbor. Um, and then uh, my, my dad was in the army. So we were in Washington state. And then I was in Ohio. My mom's from Texas. I didn't know about baseball until we really moved to Ohio when I was five years old. But before that, I already knew about football because my mom's from Texas and uh, the Cowboys were great in the seventies. And I'm a kid of this. I'm a young I was born in the seventies. So I jumped on the cowboy bandwagon, the, uh, Ed two tall Jones, Roger Staubach, Danny white, uh, you know, Randy white, Drew Pearson, Tony Dorsett. And it was the best time ever. And, and a very old Mike Ditka. Uh, yes, yes. So I jumped on the bandwagon then and, uh, have been a fan ever since went to games, going to visit my grandparents as a kid. Okay. Uh, so that that's why. And then uh, I learned about baseball, which I love baseball. So later, and I grew up in Ohio, so I became an Indians fan outside of Cleveland. So, okay, you're an Indians fan. So let's talk about this yeah. for a second. So how, like, how, how do you feel coming. about 2016 and like the Cubs and like, I, I'm you know, curious. It's, it's, it's classic Cleveland that only, only Cleveland and this is pre uh, uh, LeBron winning one finally for, for uh, the Cavs, but only Cleveland could have, who no one is really anti Cleveland Indians because no, they could give a shit. I mean, 1948 yeah. is the last time they won, but no one's really anti Cleveland, but only Cleveland could go up against the one team that everyone else is rooting for still <laughs> for the Cubbies. And even me, I'm like, Oh, that's so nice for the Cubs. Like, <laughs> it was so painful, but as painful as that was, I was actually at the world series games in 95 and 97 and uh, with Joe table messing that up in 95 with your, the Bravos. I'm old. Uh, and I went to the three home games, uh, in Cleveland with David justice. And I, I, I mean, I can't, it's actually, I, I, it's a lot. So the Indians have been so close, um, that I kind of, uh, expected it in, uh, 2016. A side note in 2016 is we had a big bottle of champagne for game seven. Uh, there was a, a Magnum that was, I don't know, some gift. It was super expensive. We'd never drink it, but we're going to open it up for game seven. They lost. And then we're like, eh, well, at least a few weeks later, we'll uh, get to celebrate the first woman being president. Oops. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, well, and it, that bottle is still close to this day. Yes. Um, well, we kind of got a vice president potentially coming on the way. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not to get political, but. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's yeah. just, it's, it's, we're talking about real life. So, but one thing I did want to say, though, because. We have a saying on the show that I think I'm going to coin or I've coined. I need to get it on a T-shirt. It's Atlanta going to Atlanta. And <laughs> you got 28 to 3, of course. You've got UGA losing the national championship game at the very last second. You've got Yasiel Puig coming to the Braves and then testing positive for COVID for not coming for the Braves. So then he's not coming. You've got okay. Atlanta United who didn't score a single tournament in the ML a single goal in the MLS restart tournament. Again, I was so shocked by that. Atlanta going to Atlanta. That's, that's the yeah. expression on the show. So I can feel your pain as a Cleveland and Cowboys and Michigan sports fan, except I think we still have it worse somehow. And I'm sure Nabil is going to find a way to show. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight that back. I'm, I hate to tell you that there. I mean, the Indians, it's been 1948. We are the longest running team that hasn't won a, a, a champion, a World Series. Thank God. But as a my, – my father is in Ohio and through and through. and. Uh, uh, used to be an Indians fan, uh, two, two things, and a diehard Browns fan. The Browns, Ohio, Cleveland's a football country anyway, and the Browns are just, it's so pathetic, I can't even tell you. It's just like the fact that they haven't been able to with 65 draft picks first I'm, round. So I may be on his side. The Browns may be the most, Browns fans may be the most unlucky fans ever because not, so let's just put a timeline over here. Um, the Browns had Bill Belichick, right? Yeah. The Browns, Cleveland Browns. And then that team turned, and then Bill Belichick got fired, and that team then turned into the Baltimore Ravens, which yeah. might be the second best ran franchise. And well, I don't know, maybe oh, top it's up there though. Top 
three, top four ran franchise since they became the Ravens. No question. Ozzie Newsome all around. Art Modell is hated more than uh, any serial killer in Cleveland. No question. And then the Browns get recreated, and then every three years they get recreated because they have no patience. And it's such it's such a shit show. It's <laughs> such a shit show. I've been to the opening game the last two years, and I'm still as a Cowboy fan. I but I go back as the league, and it, it, it's 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 pathetic. Well, how did you feel when Baker Mayfield finally won that one game on Thursday Night Football? I mean, that had to be special, right? I remember watching that with my mom, and my mom was like, wow, this is kind of a big deal. They, they must be really bad if they're celebrating, like, a 21-13 well, When win. they cracked open all the Bud Light cases and everything? Right, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Bud Light, it was going to go bad. <laughs> no, it's uh, it, it, it's pathetic. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, anyway, but, but last Cleveland thing, and we can get off that, is the uh, – uh, which is why I love LeBron. We can get talk about that if you want to talk NBA. Oh, yeah. My dad actually had tickets with his dad to uh, the 1954 World Series in Cleveland where the Indians were by far favored against the uh, New York Giants. They'd won 111 games, beating any record any time. He had tickets to game five. They were swept in four. And that was the Willie Mays catch, by the way. Before oh, that. Wow. So it took him about 30, 30, 40 years to become a fan again. Not, 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 not Cleveland. To- not to age you at all, but this has been the most historic sports podcast we've ever had. So this is great. <laughs> um, but so since you mentioned LeBron, and then we can kind of transition to life in LA and then maybe wrap up. Yeah. We were coming up on an hour, so we don't want to take too long. But and we talk more offline. But um, so what did you think about LeBron winning? I guess, was that 2016? 2016, yep. So it was 2016. Something yeah. from that year. How do you feel about There was that? something good from that year, yeah. Uh, you know, I I was really upset when the announcement happened, you know, uh, when he's taking his talents elsewhere. Okay. And then I realized, you know what? He's a kid. He's had nothing. And it, that, that was just a bad PR. Ever since then, I've been the biggest LeBron fan. That guy has done more for his state and his, that area. I'm from Northeastern Ohio than I think I, any athlete I've seen. Like, I know – one of my friends went to the high school where he went in Akron and like he literally, besides the money, he's basically just given, he's given so much to that community that the fact that then he won a championship, I just wish him the best. Like he is, that is a true, like, I wish we had more uh, athletes like him in my, in my book, he can do, uh, he can do no wrong. So I, now that he won one in Cleveland, great. Come out here. Be a movie, you know, producer, magnet, do whatever you want. Win one in, in the Lakers. I never cared for the Lakers. I root more for the Clippers. But with LeBron there, I want him to win one. Uh, so a couple of things about that. One, so, I mean, at least the Ohioan and the Cleveland and you has a championship in recent years. Yes. Whereas yep. the Atlanta sports fan of me still doesn't. So yeah, we can fair. that debate. And we'll just leave 95, it. 95, but you're young. Yep. Yeah, I was young. And then uh, one, but then two – I'm actually a diehard Lakers fan. Like I love all the Atlanta teams, but I love the like I love Kobe and I love the Lakers. And so I'm rooting for LeBron and the Lakers to win it right now. Um, so you're out there and I think there, there might've been something else there, but probably not. But, um, Oh no, LeBron to me is a model citizen. Like I, like obviously Kobe and Michael Jordan may be better statistically and, and sure. historically, but I don't see how people can hate LeBron James. The guy is a model citizen off the court. I mean, he's done so much for his community. He doesn't get in trouble. The, no, no question. And the one thing I would say about him that people, I think, doesn't get enough credit is like, he also came from nothing and had no support or no one helping him out. Yes, he, he's got people helping him out because he has money now. But, like, that's the part. Like, I, I'm, I, I'm a uh, – I'm lucky of where I came from and I had supportive parents and everything else. I'm not saying his mom wasn't there, but it's like he came from nothing and, and he still has the wherewithal. Yeah. That that's the part. Yeah. That is a that is a true my God, if we had more athletes like that, I mean, come on. And we, so, we could if they just wanted to be those people, you know? Yeah. Like I mean, we could financially anyway. Totally. Oh, totally, totally. But uh anyway, so yeah, shout out to LeBron. Hopefully Definitely. the Lakers win. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Like the the NBA bubble is just fun right now, so I ain't picking a team to back yet. But uh, you know, Dame Lillard's been killing it, so I don't know if he's been watching it. But Damian Lillard, yeah, no, I've been watching some. I've, I've definitely been watching some. It, it is funny. I will. I have noticed it being an old guy compared to you guys that it is amazing how the NBA 
mind you, I was all in on Jordan back back in the day and yeah. that, when I was young. But it is amazing. The NBA to me has uh, such a following, like 35 and under, 40 and under, that I feel like it just didn't have before. And it, it's it's cool to see. Like other writing staffs I've been on and stuff, it, the NBA has a, a culture to me that that was only the NFL uh, back when I was your age. So uh, it, it's cool to see. It's great. Yeah. But I watch it probably the 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 least amount of the the major sports unless like my team or you know LeBron or somebody or you know is is involved. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like the viewership of like all sports has changed. Like I used to go, mm-hmm. you know, football, baseball, basketball, then hockey, and then you know any Olympic or soccer or whatever. Now it's all changed. You know, like football is still number one, but everything else is yeah. the wild card now. I'm, I'm with you there. And some of the bubble NBA games have been great, just for the record. I mean, yeah. I'm sure people have watched, yeah. but I've seen uh, a couple, and I've definitely watched Sports Center and stuff. And it, yeah, they are they are fun to watch outside of getting used to the fans on the side. So as we close out, um, I'm gonna so I'm gonna ask you with two questions. Leave your two questions, and I might have one for you too. If Nabil doesn't ask it, so right. So so one's a prediction. And one's a question, which is going to ruin um, a couple of weeks from you. So, okay. So I just want to say, let's do your question. Let's do the predictions at the end. Okay. So, so that's how we end. Right? Cool. So, so prediction, I'll say for later. The question I'm going to ask, and this may ruin your standing with your friends. Who is your number one pick in fantasy this year? Oh, uh, number one pick for fantasy. Oh. And I don't know if you guys have a keepers league. If you guys have anything that's a little off or something, include that in. By the way, let me mute in the Bill's microphone so he doesn't hear this. So it's just me you're talking <laughs> to. Yeah. I mean, oh, I am probably going. I, I mean, I'm probably I'm going running back. I'm going running back. Yeah. I, but it's just a question. It's just a question. I will be a homer, and I know because of my shitty draft pick last last year, it would be I'll probably end up with someone like Zeke. <laughs> which okay. is fine so um but god I, you know it, it is tough because right now i'm going to play the covid number one draft pick which means that <laughs> we tend to not draft until uh actually after the the thursday night game and we because we're usually at the game of, of week one and uh and with with what's going on here and i'm i'm going to be watching hard knocks which i know came out a couple days ago yeah I, it really is going to come down to uh like cities that are hot zones that I think some of the players may have COVID and not picking them. So someone who may have been a sixth round, uh, a sixth pick may become my first pick. If that ah, makes sense. Interesting. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, no, that's so totally interesting. We're, and we do like a fancy football blowout. So maybe we can have oh, you back on or we'll get sure. correspondence from you in a couple of weeks once mm-hmm. we do our fancy football special we really do a big on the show for that my question Please. is a little more hypothetical and it's pretty easy straightforward kind of um all right you got michigan you got the cowboys and you've got the indians one team can win a championship either this season or next season let's just say this season who are you going with obviously oh, mi- that's assuming michigan was playing and whatnot but like yeah. what championship would mean the most to you for your team Oh, I mean, it's uh, Michigan National Championship, no question. I mean, I, I again, I'm dating myself, but 1996, 97, we had a co-championship, I think, with Penn State. It was the Ryan Leaf, uh, Peyton Manning year, and Michigan ended up beating Washington State, where Ryan Leaf was from, 21-16 in the Rose Bowl. And I saw Ryan Leaf, and I thought, this is how good I am at uh, talent scouting. I said, that is your best fucking quarterback ever, man. If he is picked if Peyton Manning goes ahead of him it's the idiot Ryan Leaf is the best quarterback I've ever seen <laughs> anyway so that's the year that's the year that uh last time Michigan had a co-championship pre-BCS no question to see Jim Harbaugh win something in Michigan would be my first choice all right, all right. and then yeah then Indians I'm assuming right then Indians yeah as hard as it was that's where I was going I was going Indians but no, that's that's totally cool. And just for the, I hate the Cowboys actually, but I love playing with them in Madden. So it's like a very weird relationship that <laughs> wait, I have. Wait, okay, weird question. Love or hate them. When was the last time you played Madden? It was actually a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay, cool. And cool. so the Madden Cowboys I'm referring to is like either the Tony Romo Cowboys or now the Dak and, and Zeke Cowboys. Like the Cowboys and Madden, I love playing with, but I I don't, I don't really like watching <laughs> them win. 
uh, you know. Sure, that's fair. That's fair. So, okay, this is random now. How, like, yeah. what do you think is gonna happen with the Dak situation? So he's here for this year. What's gonna happen next I, year? Do you think? I think, a I think the Cowboys are management is really dumb here. <laughs> I think. I mean, as much look, the, the, all money's pretend money right now. It's gonna be Kirk Cousins in a heartbeat. As much as you can say shit about Kirk Cousins, he he was the highest paid player in football last year. Like he he made out so well being like, you know, um, being franchised again and again. Yeah. And if they end up doing that with with Dak, all Dak has to do is have a decent year. Nice, nice. All he has to do is have a decent year, and I mean, he's I mean, he, be, led the, he led the league in passing last year, so. Yeah, I just don't know how you. I I mean, am I? Is he Russell Wilson? Absolutely not. You know, but are there like ten quarterbacks better than him? No. Yeah. You got to pay him the money. I think you got to pay him the money. I was surprised that they could not come up with a deal. And uh, that Patrick Mahomes contract did not help the situation. <laughs> no, it did not help the situation. And, and it's weird. I mean, where do you guys land on that as being a good deal? Oh, I think it's a great deal. Uh, I, I do too. I, I do too. Like for both, really. It's like okay, definitely. I mean, I mean, it's yeah. a it's a half a billion dollars, so that's not a bad deal for Mahomes. But at the same time, like he is the best young player in football right now. There's no one that you would rather build a franchise over Patrick Mahomes. No question. No question. Yeah. The, we're on the opposite side of the studio right now, but if I was closer to my backpack, I actually have a magazine with Patrick Mahomes on the cover. It's the most recent issue of GQ. Yeah. It, and he would give me crap for it. You know what? Because I would leave just, it here. Just, just give me crap for uh, wearing this. The Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, oh, I remember him. I mean, he's from you guys. <laughs> he's from Ohio. He is from Ohio, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, all right, prediction. Well, yeah, well, what I was gonna ask prediction was like, what is the Cowboys' record this year and where are they going? Oh, all right, even though I really do like the new name of the Washington football team. <laughs> Uh, I, re- I I do. I, actually, actually, I, actually, I, have, I have a great idea for that name. Instead of the name that they used to be, they should be the Pigskins. Because <laughs> they, be. cause they were the Hogs. for the, they, they had the Hogs for the longest That's time, right? That's a great idea. That's a really and good idea. a football is a pigskin. Yeah. Oh, man. The I, I, that's genius. <laughs> he wrote that's that. I, I, I'm, all, I'm all for that. Uh, no, I'm, I am all in. I, and I really haven't been. I, I still think... I think they will. Uh, they're going to win a playoff game, and I think they're going to either win the division or come in second. But I think they're. Uh, I'm going to NFC Championship game. Wow! All right. That's where I'm going, and then maybe. But it could be. It's so hard to pick. I never bet on my own team, so right. It's so hard to go after that, and I don't know after that. I mean, I think again on paper. Sorry, I think the Saints are the best team. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would say NFC. If, if they get to the NFC Championship. Oh, back up a money truck for Dak, too. All right. So, uh, I'm just going off of recent stuff. If the yeah. NFC Championship game between the Cowboys and the Saints, based off of recent stuff that's been happening, the Cowboys would go to the Super Bowl because the Saints will just, just get screwed over some way or not, right? Maybe? Well, yes. Their, their past history <laughs> – uh, I mean, Saints past history, there'll be a, a blown call or something. Sure, sure. Yeah, or a miracle in <laughs> Minneapolis or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I I don't want to jinx anything that either you just said, so I'm just going to leave it at that. You know, all right, and there's no home field advantage probably anyway for any team. So. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, going to be a weird year of football, but as long yeah. as we have it, I'll be happy. Oh, yeah. Oh, same here. Cheers uh, to that. Yeah, cheers to that. And then – And a cheers to you, man. I appreciate you coming oh, up. thanks. Yeah, so – That was fun. Just to close out real fast, at Bears, Birds, and Brews, that's where you can find us. Greg, tell people about where, how they can find you on Instagram or wherever. And then, yeah, you know, I'm an, I'm an old guy. I'm, I'm more of a voyeur on all those sites. I mean, yes, I am on Twitter and, and, but you know, I get kids. I'm, I'm boring there, but uh, you yeah, know, check out the show, check out, check out uh, uh, the show, Bruce brothers on Netflix. And, uh, and you should definitely check out Dave. I mean, I'm talking for you guys too. It's fun. Yeah, it's I'm going to watch Dave for sure. It's really good. I plan to for sure. But, so Greg Schaefer, Bruce Brothers creator on, you know, the show's on Netflix. Go watch it now. Where Bears, Birds, and Brews. Dave on FX. FX or FXX? Yeah. Uh, doesn't matter. FX Hulu now. They're all the same. Hulu Perfect. too. All Got good. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Greg. Uh, stay tuned. Oh, really appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to keep talking for a minute, but we're going to go off air. Awesome.
Thank y'all for listening, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks, man. Cheers. Wear a mask. Cheers.